Go to 242, Acts chapter 2. I don't remember hearing about the And they continue, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and breaking of bread and prayers. The apostles' fellowship, doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and what is not prayers in there, and what is not in there is E. Fasting. So the answer is E. All right, Miss Mother, 16. Yeah. Now, Peter and John went up together to the temple an hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Went to the temple of prayer. What was the recent practice Peter and John observed? Observing. Can I say something about that? Go ahead. Well, we got to finish 16. Then we'll go back. Okay. So, what's the answer to 16? Okay. We all agree? Yes. yes. All right. 12. What's 12? So, in 12, you, the way I uh, um, interpret it would say you were asking what did Peter, what did he not address? When, um, because these were all questions that they asked, but it, from what I got is what did he not address when he addressed them? And he didn't talk about them being Galileans, but he spoke about everything else. Mm -hmm. So, what did he ask them? So, I assume that hey, they said what is not, they didn't address that. He didn't address that in the sermon. So, what is not one of the so are you saying A? She said A is one of the things they did not address as being a Galilean. Yeah, if you listen to what Peter said, he didn't address it. Well, everybody gets that one right. I didn't get any of the first ones, though. I didn't get I didn't get one through eight. Yeah, you gotta go, you gotta yeah. I gotta I gotta get use a cheat sheet. I gotta get somebody or, or read or read the book. Oh, oh I can just go through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so uh, we're in chapter 7 tonight. Uh, so, what so book are we studying about? Acts chapter 7. So, all right, so I'm saying this. We get all, all, all of these in Acts. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so, okay, so go to Acts. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if you do your test, you make the pastor look really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Acts chapter, Acts chapter 7. So everybody knows the situation. The situation is that the early church it looks, it looks nothing like the church we have now. It was a group of people who came together and lived together, and they sold all of their possessions. They put it in a common what, pot, and everybody had enough. Yeah. So nobody... Nobody was richer than anybody else. Everybody had enough. Right. Nobody went hungry. And then uh, eventually, <coughs> we know about Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, Mike, what happened with Ananias and Sapphira? Uh, oh, Ananias, you said what happened to them? They dropped dead. Oh, yeah, they got killed. They got killed. The well, killed. Because they lied about the, the selling their property and the money. Mm -hmm. uh, they had. Uh, Right. Right. They didn't give all the money to the church. They, and they didn't have to. Right. Right. They just didn't have to lie about it. But they lied right. about it. Peter says, you didn't have to sell your house. Right. You didn't have to bring the money to the church. Right. You could have kept it when you sold it. Mm -hmm. Or you could have just told the truth and said, look, I sold it for this much, but I'm keeping that much. But but Ananias didn't have a chance to talk. Peter. Well, well, he lied, though. He lied right away. Yeah, but he didn't get a chance. Is that right, Robert? Neither one of them did. No, she got to. No, he, well, you know what I'm saying? He asked. So, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you mean? And the nice brothers, they didn't know. They didn't know. Peter just judged him. They just knew he was going to lie right off the bat. Peter just judged him. Peter says, well, how did Peter say? Let's go to it. Yeah. Ask what? And we're gonna, we got to keep moving. Oh, okay, okay. I'm sorry. No, I did no, all no, the time. No, no, I love people with questions. Anybody know where it's at? That's what I love. Okay, here it is right here. All right, chapter 5. Here it is. 
uh, Peter says to Ananias, no, oh, here we go. By one, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Don't know what they said. And kept back part of the price, comma, his wife also being privy to it, means she knew about it, and brought a certain part and laid it at, at the apostles' feet. Okay? They sold something, mm -hmm. they laid part of it at, at the apostles' feet. Everybody was selling all that they had, mm -hmm. and we had all of them. The Bible says, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy own mm -hmm. thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back part of the price for the land? That's the question. Second question, second thing says, while it remained, was it not their own, thy own? And after it sold, was it not thy own power? In other words, did you have the power to do whatever you want to do? Why has thy conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but it was like to thy God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down. Mm. He gave his lips. Mm. The great fear came among them that heard these things. So then why would he do that? I'm saying if you if you if you if he had the right to keep back part of it, that's what he did. He kept back part of it. He was acting. He was pretending to be like one of them. A lot of people do that in church every Sunday. So how I'm saying, what did, where did where did he go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't get it. I'm, I'm saying like I legitimately don't get it. If you if if if, if I'm a, if I'm, you want some money and mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring you some money, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna keep this part for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't lie and say I gave it all. Just but everybody else was giving all of their money. Well, then why did he say you could have kept back part of it? You didn't have to get none of it. They weren't forcing you to get it. So he basically saying you should have kept it all or gave it all. He's not lying about it. Don't lie. I gave my all when you didn't. That's where you wrong. The moral is, you lie to God, you might die. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so don't lie. You did it on Old Testament. Gotcha. <laughs> and he just, he just, <laughs> he came on a bad day. He came on a bad day. <laughs> In other words, people, they came to the church pretending to be something that they weren't. We call that hypocrite, which means actor. They came in actor. You know, some people might come come into church and they don't know God, but they know all the words. You know, some people might come into church and you know they, they pretend to be like everybody else. Okay, this this is not the place where you pretend because God exposes people in the church. You are what you are. You know, and if, in fact, you come into the church to be changed by the Word of God because the Word washes you. So if you're pretending like you ain't dirty, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> we can wash every Sunday. Yes. Right? Because they none of us clean. And if you think that you was clean before you left and got home, you'd be dirty again. Filthy yeah. <laughs> rest. Right? So here we go. Acts chapter 7. So uh, there's deacons in the church. Or the women in the church, the uh, Grecian women who were Hebrews, but they grew up Greek. We're complaining that they weren't getting their ample supply of food. Okay, we we have a food pantry, and our uh, thought process on the food pantry is: if you're in need, we're going to give it. Uh, God has provided it for us, and nobody in this church should be hungry. I mean, what kind of a church would we be if the people in our church can't get nothing to eat? <laughs> and there's nothing to be ashamed of because I tell y'all, I think I ate out of the pantry for like three years. I know what it feels like. So, uh, first three verses. So, we're going to go to seven. So, Stephen or Stephen was a special kind of guy, and they were picking on him. They, meaning the people who killed Jesus, mm -hmm. were picking on this guy named Stephen. He was like an early deacon of the church, or I wouldn't even call him a deacon yet because they were just helpers. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they needed seven helpers is because the church is growing. Mm -hmm. and one of the things that we say here in this church, our church is growing too. So can we get ahead of it mm -hmm. so that we have enough people in place that when the people do come, we're ready for them? Okay, so first three verses, uh, Robert. And then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Man, brethren and fathers, hearken. For God's glory appeared unto our father Abraham 
And he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharon. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Okay, so if you've ever wanted to understand the Old Testament without reading the whole Old Testament, read Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7 is like the highlights of the Old Testament. It, 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 his, his, what Stephen is saying is to all these people who are trying to shut him up and kill him, which Stephen can't do because he loves God. And when you fill with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you can't help yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Steve, Stephen, how do you pronounce his name? Stephen. 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 All right. See, I ain't that smart anymore. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you this so that's just like tomato, Stephen. tomato, right. <laughs> potato, potato. Right. Stephen <laughs> was a godly man, a holy man, full of the Spirit. He was doing the best he could. This is their only church, so he's out there. He's helping. The problem was the, the Grecian women didn't have, they weren't getting their supplies, so he made sure that they got their supplies. But God chose him and anointed him, and because he was so chosen, and this is something we all have to remember, that the world came against him. Mm -hmm. The people who didn't love God came against him. So they, they want to kill him, and then he starts he starts preaching. This is a sermon. He said that the high priest is trying to do the same thing to him that they did to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he, he just tells us the Jewish race started off with Abraham. God came to Abraham, told him to leave your country, leave your kindred, and come into the land which I shall show you. So that'd be like God saying us to us right now. Leave your job, leave your house, leave the people you love, and go. And go. But he's not telling him where he's going. He's just telling him to go. And how many people right now are in a position where they would do that? I mean, I would just have to. I would do it. Well, I mean, yeah, well, he... God came to him twice, and, and he did it. I would love to, but I'll do it. But I'm just, what, we're, what we're showing you is the faithfulness of Abraham. Mm -hmm. okay? And we're also going to show you that even though mankind are fallible, which means we sin, we make mistakes, God is still able to work through that with us. Amen. Okay, so, uh, 7 3 and 7 4, dear. And he said unto, unto them, Get thee out of thy country, and thy kingdom, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Then he came ye out of the land of the Chaldeans, and dwelt in Sharon. And from thence his father was dead. He removed him from this land within wherein he ye now dwell. And he gave him a none inheritance. Amen. Not know so much as to set foot on. Yet he promised that he would give up, give it up to him for possession, and to receive after him. When as yet he had no child. So God begins the nation of Israel with one man, Abraham. Okay, Abraham doesn't have any kids, right? No. Okay, he's an older man now. How anybody got any idea how old Abraham is about this time? Hundred and something? No. Anybody? Yeah. yeah, when he has his child, he's in his. But how old is he now? Oh. All right. So I don't always answer y'all's questions. <laughs> so you need to find out how old he is. Hey Google. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but that's what this Bible study is supposed to be. Send you to Google. Send you to your Bible. But if I give you everything, how was Abraham when he left Chaldea? Oh, oh, no. Okay, so, and how old was his wife? They were well beyond the years of having children, right? Mm -hmm. So not only did God tell him to get up and leave and, 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 and walk away from your people, he says, I'm going to give you a child, too. Now, neither one of them can have kids. Right. They're well beyond the age of having kids. But God 
can take the impossible and make it happen. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Um, Deacon David, the next two verses. What, what, what verse was that? What, what line was chapter 7. Six. What verse was that? Verse 6. Verse 6. Oh. Acts chapter 7, verse 6. And God spake upon us wise, that it seemed to sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat an evil 400 years. Verse 7. And the, and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. So God told Abraham what was going to happen before it happened. Amen. 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 So what does that mean? God can see. <laughs> Don't always think that God sees you as you are. God sees you as what you will be. Mm -hmm. So don't don't think that I'm jumped now. No, no, no. God is God can see. We can't see what we're gonna be like in 20 years, but God can see. Right. So don't ever uh, sell yourself short. Right. Amen. I'm so glad y'all didn't see me before I became a pastor. <laughs> Nobody be in this church. That's not true. You got to have plans for me. And you got plans for you too, bro. Amen. He ain't finished with you yet. He's still working. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, he, said, he says that your seed is going to go into bondage for 400 years. And, then, and he says, the nation that brings you in bondage, I'll judge. And we know that Israel, I mean, we know that Israel was a bondage to who for 400 years? Egyptian. Egyptian for 400 years. So God's already telling, he's telling you what he's going to do before it happens. Moses is that. And, and God says, the, the country that go into bondage, I'll judge them. Mm -hmm. And after that, they shall come forth and serve <laughs> me in this place. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, and he gave them the covenant of circumcision. Okay, so the circumcision is um, the, the cutting off of yes. unnecessary flesh. Yes. So now, instead of being circumcised in the old covenant of, of the Hebrews, we're circumcised in our hearts to get rid of the evil flesh that we have, right? Okay, so it says in verse 8, and now God gave them covenant circumcised, <coughs> and this is how the, the, they knew that they were God's people. And so Abraham begot Isaac, right? And circumcised him. And on the eighth day, and Isaac begot who? Jacob. And Jacob begot who? Okay, so here it is. God begins the nation. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs or the 12 individuals who will, try, who will start the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, so now... Is that going to be on earth? Like, uh, on earth. Okay. Everything we're talking about is on earth. When we get to Revelation, we'll keep talking about things in heaven and earth. But we'll be on earth here. The Bible says, 10, 11, um, who? Um, okay. And delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt, and a Chanan and a great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. Okay, so here's here's what God, here here's how God moved the situation. Okay. Uh, so Joseph. And uh, these are why I love, love the stories of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Joseph was his father's favorite. He gave him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. God blessed him, and he had a couple of dreams, right? So his brothers were jealous. They threw him in a pit. They were, they were going to kill him, but they didn't kill him. When uh, This is all in Genesis. When uh, a traveling group of people came, they sold their brother to slavery, and he, they took him to Egypt as a slave, right? God had a plan plan was to get Joseph down there, put him in a position that he could help his family and help the nation. And what God did with Joseph was he made him the second most powerful person in Egypt. 
and he gave him a dream. A dream of there would be seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. And he was prepared. So sometimes God uses hardship, jail, because yeah. Joseph went to jail, and prison to bring about the change in you that he wants in you. <laughs> Y'all supposed to be saying amen and shut the This is a dead church. This is a dead church. <laughs> is that right? Yes. What do you say? Can we consider the suffering for a second before we say amen? Yeah, well, it's suffering. Right. Because <laughs> everybody was thinking about their own. Right. 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 <laughs> like, God. Like, you know what? Ooh. God. Ooh. Ooh. The first thing me and him did was look at each other. I'll change. I'll change. I'll change. Ooh. 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 So, all of that, God didn't waste. That wasn't when you were going through what you were going through. Huh. It was to get you into that right fellowship and relationship with him. Because oh, when your whooping stopped, your mindset was different. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correction was made. Yes. Correction. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe God says, this is what it's going to take for this individual. So, so God made Joseph. Go to prison. And he was still faithful in all of that. Potiphar's wife wanted to uh -huh. sleep with him, but he ran. Uh -huh. He was faithful. Uh -huh. He wasn't angry because he was put in a position that he wasn't comfortable with. He still served God. Uh -huh. That's the most important thing. If anything happens to you, Understand that God is allowing it to happen. Yeah. And you don't need to lose <laughs> who you are yeah. in the midst of the situation. Yeah. Wow. And Joseph, the Bible says in 14, and <clears throat> he sent Joseph and called for, for his father Jacob to, to him and all his kindred, three score and 15 souls. So eventually, he called his father to Egypt because there was a famine. Verse 15, so Jacob went down to Egypt and died, he and our fathers. So he's given a whole reaccount of the Old Testament highlights. Uh, Chantel, 16, 17, 18. And they were carried back towards the eastern and lay in the tomb that Abraham bought for a sum of money and their sons of them more to fall asleep. But when the time of the promise drew near which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt till another king arose who did not know Joseph. So as long as the king was up, the Pharaoh was alive, uh -huh. Joseph was taken care of in his family. Mm -hmm. And that's 75 people that he came down with. Remember, these are the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. So these 12 tribes multiplied. So there's over a million people. Mm -hmm. And after 400 years, mm -hmm. a million people from each of the 12 tribes. Right, so <clears throat> eventually, after four hundred years, right, there arose a pharaoh that didn't know the story of Joseph. Right, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, there, how about seventeen, eighteen, nineteen? But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. The same dealt subsequently with our kindred, mm -hmm. and evil and threatened our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end, that they might not live. One more. In which time Moses was born, and was exceedingly fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. Okay, so what happened was this Pharaoh. Was afraid of the multiplication of the Egyptians. I mean, the, 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 God was about ready to move the whole nation, so He multiplied the whole nation. Yeah. So there's probably as many or more Hebrews that they were afraid that they could attack them or join another army and attack them. So 
what Pharaoh's decision was, was take all the male children, either let them starve to death or feed them to the animals. In other words, put them out, put them out there. Okay. And they were forced to do that because Pharaoh was in control. Um, so, along, so before God moved, he, he increased their numbers. Okay. And the Bible says in 20, in which time Moses was born, and he was exceedingly fair and nursed up in his father's house three months. So he was born, they kept him for three months. Right? This is Moses. And when he had, was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for what? So Pharaoh says, kill all the males. And God says, I'm going to put a male in your house. Mm -hmm. Who but God does that? And the person that's in your house is going to bring the nation down. So you're going to raise and nurture and feed <laughs> your enemy. Wow. Mm -hmm. What's the scripture said that God prepares mm -hmm. my table before and he prepares the enemy. Mm -hmm. If you know God like I know God. Oh, I've seen my enemies come after me. Mm -hmm. But then when it was time for God to go after them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 God don't play about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't be thinking of God. Well, y'all learn. Mm -hmm. Y'all learn. Mm -hmm. uh, kick the next three verses. Okay, so um, Moses learned all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Uh, the Egyptians, they were like demonic. Um, they wrote the Book of the Dead, the wisdom of Hermes. Um, they had a god, a god that was <clears throat> Egyptian god called Thoth, T H O T H. Uh -uh. T H. <laughs> 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 Not the modern day Thoth. Not the modern day Thoth. We're not talking about acronyms here. Oh my God. He was a. He was part, this part of him was man, and this part was like a, like a, like a big head with a, like a, how many birds feet or? Oh. Yeah, 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 I know yeah. what you're talking about. It's a bird with that long, that yeah, long he's thing. he's a bird with long sleeves and that, the body of a man. Yeah. That's his no, name. They, they, make, they started making those same things when they had the plague, that plague they used to make. Yeah. They, uh, they, they knew about the wisdom of Hermes. Egyptians had magic, and there's a book of T H O T H. You can buy it. <laughs> so Moses learned all of that, and we know that the Egyptians, they when Moses threw his stick down, what? So that whole nation was demonic. They had all kinds of demons for, for um, they had demons and behind the demons, behind the gods were demons. Uh, they had um, another god. Did they have Baal? Or, or, hmm? Did they have Baal too? Or, uh, Baal's a generic name. I know what I'm saying. You know, you know mm -hmm. what you have, what they, have a, they didn't have what, what would usually take place is a country would come up with a god Another country would conquer that nation, and then they would take their gods and change the names into something else. Uh, but it would, yeah. So.
So uh, they had a god. They did some crazy stuff. Uh, there was a, there was one god that um, that they had, which the guy had uh, the face of a man and the body of a, of a fish. They would have a hole in him, oh. and then they would heat that hole up, and they would the people would take their children. Mm. Mm. What? And they would burn them alive. Mm. The people would bring them their children. Mm. Mm. But to hear your child, your own child scream, mm. who could do that? Ding. Ding. Okay. So, all right, so, um, Kick, you want to read three more? Yeah. So, uh, so, what you, which ones did you read? I read uh, one, one, two, three. Okay, Pharaoh's daughter took him up, nursed him. Uh, Mo Moses learned all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in word and deed. And when he was 40 years old, he came in his heart to visit his brother and the children of Israel. So somehow he knew that he was Hebrew. 24, 25, 26, kick. And he wanted them to suffer wrong. He defended them and then came back and oppressed and smelt their wisdom. If he supposed his brothers would have understood that God brought his hand and delivered them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as a scroll and would have set them at one again, saying, Spare ye your brethren, why do ye wrong to them? Okay, so he saw, Moses saw someone suffering wrong by the hand of the Egyptians. Remember, they were slaves. So maybe this Egyptian was beating a Hebrew, right? And like the Bible says in verse 26, and this is something that we all need to think about, uh, Moses thought that if he did what he did, that the people would see that he was a deliverer. In other words, he was doing something on his own in his own time. You can't rush God. You got to wait for God. Right. And it's got to be in God's timing when he wants it done. Right. So if, even if you are anointed and blessed, you have some gift that God has given you. Until God calls you, you just stay on the shelf. <laughs> you don't get off the shelf until God calls you. Right? And, 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 and what he tried to do is get off the shelf and, and, and try it in his own power and his own strength. And the Bible says, uh, verse 25, and, and he supposed his brother would have understood how God, by his hand, would deliver them. But they what? Because it wasn't time. <laughs> Moses is 40 years old. Jennifer, how about 26, 27, 28? And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong one to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, He may be a ruler and a judge over us. Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? I don't know if y'all caught that. Mm -hmm. But he's a murderer. Mm hmm. <coughs> So why does God use the worst of the worst and bring them to this church? But why does God use the worst of the worst yeah. and transform them into it like seemed, him? It seems like the worst of the worst are the ones that forgive the most. Like I mean that not forgive the most, but uh 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 we, we deserve we deserve we, we don't deserve. I mean, how much I say we, we we feel so uh unworthy. And we feel so grateful that yes. you forgave me that I'm willing to do more. I don't know, I guess. Yes, yes uh, brother. Yeah, that's a good yeah. uh, analogy because yeah. God uses, I, I believe, the worst to, to glorify him. Yes. People who know things pretty much good, I would think, for themselves versus mm -hmm. yeah, the glory of God. So, mm -hmm. uh, using those who are less the Bible says those who have been forgiven much yeah. uh, uh, love much because yeah, yeah. we were yes. I don't know where, what pit God pulled you out of mm -hmm. but I'll never forget what pit he pulled me out of right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. there's no way a hundred lifetimes that I could ever pay him back what he's done for me. Absolutely. He's a poor case on him. Mm -hmm. 
Man, I, I can't stop crying. I got, I got so good at seeing I got bored. I cried, mm. thank you. I'm like, this is boring. This is too easy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what like, after a while, you'd be like, um, what is this that I'm doing? It serves no purpose. And I'm bored. And so God knows who he chooses, right? Yeah. If he knew that we would be the ones that would react to his word and change. All right. Uh, who's next? Dave. Deacon Dave. The next three. And went Moses at this saying, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, Mount Midian for he begot his sons. And when four years were expired, they appeared to me in the waters of Mount Sinai, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. And Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, as as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him. Okay, so uh, how old is Moses now? You're right. He's 80. Y'all paying attention. Good. So, <laughs> Midian, he had two sons. Uh, I would like to tell you that what was the, what did, what did the Egyptians have to do with their sons? I mean, what did the Hebrews have to do with their sons have, in the eight days? What do you mean? <coughs> circumcised. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses refuses. If Moses did not circumcise his two sons. Oh. Why not? Uh, we know that God was hunting him down and killing him. God was hunting down Moses? And he was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't circumcise his sons. And this was after he... His wife did it. Wait, so this was after he... So after he killed the two... Uh, after he killed the Egyptian, right? Mm -hmm. He went to he, Midia. Right, and that's where he met the he girl. He ran. Yeah, he was, oh. he was going to run for, for murdering the Egyptian. Yeah, because they were going to kill him. Everybody knew. Yeah, for murdering the Egyptian. Right. And he right. tried to take over. Yes. Right. So then when he when he got to where he was, he ended up having two kids. Okay. But and he then, didn't observe the covenant. The covenant is you have kids. Right. You if they're your mind, you circumcise your boys. Okay, so when was God trying to kill him? My bad. When was that? Because I didn't know that I don't he called them when he called them back to uh, Egypt after the people they he went in and circumcised his sons and he wasn't doing and if she didn't kill him, if she didn't circumcise him, God was going to kill him. I did not know. I, I need to read that one. I didn't know. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quick uh, question. Uh, oh, what's the essential use uh, of uh, circumcision? It was to identify God's people. Yeah, from mm -hmm. just an identification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And separate it was, it was a covenant. Yeah. It was covenant between that was you. Abraham. What God does is God is not like us. When God says he's gonna do something, he's gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is if you say you're gonna do something for to God, then he expects you to do it. He ain't, he ain't looking at you as a person. If you tell God that God, if you if 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 you save me from this situation, I will go to church every Sunday. Don't go. He, he don't take that lightly. He don't play that. You can tell me that, but you don't tell him that. When you get married and God, you have a covenant between you and your wife, there's expectations that you do what the covenant says. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Dang, that's a wake up. Okay, that's a light bulb. Light bulb. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's a couple of things. That, Sorry, I'm, I'm going to keep going, but just come on. I, I, I hear those bells ringing. <laughs> Man. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Everybody says the same thing. So, okay, so question. What about, all right, I'm sorry, sorry, y'all. All right, listen. If you did if you did do that in the past, right? Mm -hmm. now, let's say, for instance, you didn't go back to messing up, but you didn't completely keep everything. How do you fix that? God's grace. 
I mean, okay, he, he, he had, I know he's gracious. He's, he's, he's gracious. If he wasn't gracious, you wouldn't be here. Right. In mercy. Under the law, you wouldn't be here. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. We so all, how, we how do you fix it? You don't. How are you going to fix something? You know what I mean, I mean, you, you, you I mean, that. I know, I know, I'm, I don't mean like that. I'm saying, it, just like, okay, don't get too deep, man. Okay, okay, <laughs> <Let's make this> <laughs> I, you know me, I'll start to think in my mind. I analyze Let's make this real it. simple. Uh, if you, if you were married and you cheated on your wife, okay, you broke the covenant. How do you fix that? You can't uncheat. No. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> Apologize to who? Apologize to, 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 to nice God way. first. Apologize to God first. Because <laughs> when you do that, you sin against God first, and then you sin against yourself. Okay, so, but but what God you says, God what God says, the way to sin is death. So right now, he has the right to kill you. Right, but but he didn't even do that. That's no why buts. Jesus died on the cross. No, 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 no I'm saying, but he's not. Okay, but I want you to, I want okay, you to, okay, 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 I want okay, you to okay. think a different way. He has the right to kill you. Right. Right. There's no buts. We all deserve that. You shut up now. Okay. Buts work on on earth. It don't work in heaven. <laughs> he has the right to kill you like right that. now. <laughs> okay. So he can kill you and be righteous and kill you. Right. Right. So grace says, I paid for that on the cross. Grace says, the wages of sin is death. He says, but the free gift of God. He says, I don't, I don't, I choose not to kill you. I have the right to kill you. And nobody's gonna say anything about it if I kill you. <clears throat> you will just be a grave marker. But because of what my son did, I can I can not overlook sin, but he paid on the cross. So that's why you don't want to sin anymore. Because you took him to the cross. I don't want to sin no more ever. I enjoyed it. He paid for it. It wasn't really enjoyment. So when you get to the mindset that the ways of sin is death, you'd be like, mm. and, and, and it's still, you still don't get away with it 100% because the, the relationship is dead now. <laughs> you don't even have to say anything, but something's different. I don't know what it is. And the people feel it, and the, the covenant is broken, and God is, mm, that's just, it ain't worth it. Right, right. So I'll tell you, so here we go. Okay. All right. Who can I pick on now? Wes. Verse 32. Oh, Samuel, I am the God of God's fathers, the God of Abraham. Moses trembled, but durst not behold. Then said the Lord to him, Put off thy shoes from thy feet, for the place where you thou standest is holy ground. So, I've seen, mm -hmm. I have seen the affliction of thy people which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and armed and, and, and excuse me, and, and come down to deliver them. And now come I will send you into Egypt. Okay, so God's got a plan. Moses sees a burning bush, he goes up to it, and that burning bush is God. It's Jesus. Okay. And when Moses saw it, he drew near and the voice of the Lord came out. So God was talking to Moses. Now God could have sent an angel to talk to Moses. But God himself came down and talked to Moses. Uh, he said that I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled because he knew that he was talking to God. And each and every one of us in this room, if you are been saved, God talks directly to you too. You don't see him, but he talks where? To your heart. And you hear him. And when you hear his voice, mm, the Lord said to him, put off thy shoes for thy feet, for the place which thy standest is what? 
Holy girl. In other words, because God showed up, it's holy. Mm. Mm. Because his presence is here now, it's holy. Mm. Right? Yes. In other words, um, holiness is a separation from a common condition and use. In other words, the land in which God came on is now dedicated. It's physically pure, morally pure, blameless, religious, or blameless or religious, ceremoniously concentrated. Concentration. The most holy one thing. The difference between us and God is God is holy naturally. When we want to become holy, we gotta take something out of our life. He ain't gotta take nothing out of his life. He's holy. So but God says, This air, this this place where I met you is now holy because I'm here. And he says, Take off your shoes. In other words, get as low as you can yes. in yes. my presence. Yes. Just and how many people want to get low? Yes. I want to get low. Mm -hmm. I, get low. Mm -hmm. I ain't getting in his way, right, man? <laughs> mm -mm. So, and God, he speaks to him in an audible voice. He says, I have seen, I have seen the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard of their groanings and come down to deliver them. Now come, I will send thee unto what? Egypt. You wanted to do it on your own earlier, 40, right. 40 years ago, but now it's time. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to send you down. So what does that mean? No matter what you say, guess what? Pack your bags, because you're going. Right? Amen. Gotta go. And Moses, whom they refused, saying, "Who may be?" Earlier, they refused, saying, "Who may be a ruler or a judge?" And the same did God send to be ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him. And which, in other words. The same person they rejected has now been sent back. But this time, he's not doing it on his own. He's been sent. As backup. God's going to be with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, Daryl, next three verses. This Moses, who he was saying, which may be a ruler and a judge, the same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. He, he brought them out after that he said, show them wonders and signs on the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you your brethren like unto me. He shall, he shall be here. This is he who was in the church of the wilderness with the angels who spake to him in, the, in Mount Sinai, with our fathers who received the writing oracle to give unto them. Okay, so at this time, Egypt was probably one of the powerfulest nations in the world. Mm -hmm. God sent one man down there with a, with a stick. <laughs> right? And his brother Aaron mm -hmm. and took all the people mm -hmm. from Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said, I'm not gonna let you go. And I said, Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna let you go. And did it ten times. Mm -hmm. And then the last time, what was the last plague? John. He killed the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh said, I've decided oh, oh, oh. to let you go. No, you didn't decide. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ain't had nothing left. Mm -hmm. Your whole nation is on fire. Mm -hmm. In fact, God perfectly hard his heart to let us know what God can do to anybody with hearts and heart. Mm -hmm. So it says that Moses said he was the mighty man word of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But when um, God told him to go to Egypt, mm -hmm. he was saying that um, basically he's a stutterer. When mm -hmm. he becomes a stutterer, We try to run, don't we? <laughs> when, they, when they said money and word, I didn't think they meant his his. his but here's speech. the thing. I thought they meant his knowledge. But here's the thing that you have to understand. It don't matter. It, it, you ain't doing nothing anyway. Who's doing it all? God. You can, you only have, all Moses had to do is hear what God says and drop that stick. He <laughs> <laughs> have to say right. nothing? What's he going to say? There's nothing he don't have to say. But God brought who with him? 
Aaron. Okay. And Aaron and Moses. So there's no excuse for serving God. If, if God has come, if God has saved you, then he has given you a gift which he expects to use in your life to bring other people to Christ. Right? So, I kind of had other things to say, but real quick, uh, even though uh, Aaron made a golden calf, he was there when God told him to speak to the rock, they hit the rock. Aaron, um, because of what he did, God told Moses that Aaron's not going to make it into the promised land. Because he made a golden calf. And God was right up top on that same mountain. And God took him to a mountain in front of the whole, all of Israel. God told Moses to take his son up there. God says in front of all the people, take the priestly robe off of him and put it on his son. Now, Aaron was Moses' brother. Mm -hmm. But when God tells you to do something, I don't care if it's your brother, mm -hmm. your mother, mm -hmm. your father, your pastor, God tell you to do something, what? Do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. So put the priestly garb on Moses, I mean Aaron's son, and they walked down the mountain and God killed him. God, God killed kill Aaron's son. Killed Aaron. Aaron. Aaron? Oh, killed Aaron. How did he kill him? The Bible didn't say. But he didn't leave that mountain. Wow. Wow. Get into Acts 11. Right? When I leave right here, I'm getting into Acts. You know, I'm about to get out of here. When I leave here, I'm getting, I'm getting into this. Man. I knew I, I, cause I, 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 so here we go. I, I don't, I don't slow down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep throwing punches. <laughs> uh, so Robert, the next three verses. Where we at? Let's do uh, thirty-nine. Whom my fathers would not obey, they thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into evil. Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for, for as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, he was not what is become of him. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idols, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. And what does make verse? Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness? Okay. Ye, go ahead. No, go ahead. The last one. Ye, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God, Raphim, the figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Okay, so Moses went up to the mountain. Him and who else? Aaron. No, Aaron's down there making a gold cat. <laughs> 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 Who did he go up there with? All right. Son. Who? You said Aaron's son. son. No. You said Moses went. David, you got to know this. Who did Moses go up on the mountain with? To get the Ten Commandments? God. He was up there with God. He was up there with God, but he took somebody with him. Google it. Aaron's son. <laughs> mm -hmm. Aaron was building. He was building a gun. Okay, so. No, we're going to. No, it's, Google it. I ain't got my phone this time. And okay, so they made a calf. And here's a very interesting verse, verse 42. And God turned and gave them up. Okay, that word gave them up is he just said, I'm not gonna stop you anymore. You wanna worship some some other God? I'm gonna let you worship him. That's the same words that he used in Romans chapter one about homosexuality. People who are homosexual. If you're homosexual, it's not because you choose to be. It's, you're homosexual because God let you be. God could have stopped people from doing it, but because they reject him, they're not appreciative of him, they don't love him, he says, okay, you don't want me? Here. I'm going to give you up. I'm going to give you up to these foul affections where men will love men and women will love women. Yes? What about the ones that are born, like, that, that, that come out when you are gay and kid? Okay, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no,
Right. Now you, you might have been born with the with the idea that you were gonna be a, a murderer or a robber, but it's sin. <laughs> okay. So everybody's born in sin. All have sinned. That's how many? Yes. Everybody. Okay. So how the issue is, in order to go to heaven, you gotta be born again. Mm -hmm. So that first birth sends you to hell. So you could be you want you say you're gay? Okay. So oh, no, no, not me, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't care. No. You say you're a murderer. I don't care. You're a thief. I don't care. Straight there. You say, you say you're a liar. I don't care. You can say whatever you want to say. We're all going to sin. Every one of us. Right? Right. I don't care what you say you are. It don't matter. But the Bible says you must be born again. So the first birth sends you to hell. The second birth sends you to heaven. So until you leave that first birth and get a new birth, you're going to hell. So I, 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 when they say I, I was born gay, I say, well, I was born a liar. So what? <laughs> I was born a thief. But I know a person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell them about it. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Tell them about it. Read faster. <laughs> I know a person. Right? right? You know a person. Right, right. How, you can come in here gay. You'll leave straight. Come in here mess around with this word. You'll leave straight. Amen. Y'all playing with me. Let me clarify. The reason I asked you is because I got uh, a couple relatives and um, they're, they're close to me in it. Romans chapter one. Did you read that? Yeah, yeah. Romans chapter one. So, y'all don't mess me all up. I was gonna just go deep down with this. <laughs> this is a good Bible, Bible study, man. Everybody it's interested. Awesome Bible study. <laughs> Joshua one more. There you go. Thank you. There you go. I'm writing it down. There you go. Okay, we talked about Molly. It's the one that they set to fire. Uh, they had the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a court, was outside, the holy inside <coughs> the tent was the holy place. In the back room was the holiest of holies. Uh, the Bible says that they found favor with God and desired to find the tabernacle of God, God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a house. So David couldn't build a house. He says in verse 48. So David wanted to build the house of God and God wouldn't let him build it because David was a what? Murder. Murder. He was Murder. a man of war. war. Okay, but Solomon built the house. Uh, Carl, how about 48, 49, and 50? Going to finish. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted, and they have not slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, and of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? So he's preaching. Who's preaching? But he's inspired by who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So he he he, he goes on, he's telling her the whole history. He's rewinding all. He's bringing it back. But even though he's bringing them back and he's telling it the way it's supposed to be, he says, "You here's what gets him in trouble. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart. Yeah. yeah. You always do resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So, so do you. And he says, which one of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Mm -hmm. They killed Isaiah, they killed Jeremiah, they killed Zechariah. 
they killed John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So anybody who stood up and told the word of God in truth, they tried to kill him. So all these years I've been feeling bad and I know the why. Because nobody wants to hear the truth. They will shut you up or stop you or try to shut you down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> and he says, even though you received these words by angels, so the angels passed them on and they said, you still didn't keep it. I'm going to try to wrap this up real quick because we've only got a <clears throat> few verses. Verse 59, and they heard these things and they were cut to the heart and they were gashed on him with their teeth. In other words, when you get convicted, you can either gash your teeth or what? Yeah. Repent and surrender, but they choose to gash your teeth. Verse 55, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the what? Right. So as he's preaching, God opens a door, a window, so he can see straight in hell. I'm talking about, let me go like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I gotta go, let me see heaven. Right. I ain't gonna be scared of nothing. I'm like, shh, y'all just be quiet. <laughs> he's coming on you. He, look, God is standing up. I ain't worried about it. Now, if I see fire. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all <laughs> yeah. grab my arms. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go. They ain't gonna help me. He says, being full of the Holy Ghost, he looked steadfast fast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing in the right hand of God. Verse 56. And he says, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing. Oh, y'all. Not sitting, but standing. In other words, when he's standing, he's like doing this. Come on. Come on. God says, you're coming. This is where you're coming. Don't even worry about them down there. I'm coming to get you. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, and they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. So they cried out so loud, they didn't want to hear anything else he had to say. <clears throat> and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city. And stoned him, and witness laid down. They got some big rocks over there. Uh -huh. They laid him down with their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Saul, Saul, Saul became the murder. Paul. Saul, the murder. Saul the murder. And the Bible says, verse fifty-nine, and they stoned Stephen, called upon God, and saying, "Lord Jesus, receive." It's kind of what Jesus said when he was, yeah. when he gave up the ghost. Yeah. Jesus called out with a loud voice and says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Mm -hmm. And having said this, he breathed. Last one. Last one. The Bible says, verse 60, and he kneeled down. He didn't run. He didn't try to get out. He had already preached his sermon. Mm -hmm. Last sermon he's going to preach. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Lord, lay not this to their sins against Charlie. What is he doing? He's praying for them, asking God to forgive them. As they're killing him. Isn't that what Jesus did? Mm-hmm. Yes. On the cross? Mm-hmm. Dang, that's right. They did this. Yeah, they did this. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The Bible says, that those who are in Christ, we don't die. We fall asleep, which means we will wake up. To be absent from the body is the presence of the Lord. So if a lot of people are afraid to die, but the Bible says when we die as Christians, first thing we're gonna see is God with a smile on the face. And Paul says, it's most needful for me to be down here with you. But I'd rather be in heaven. I'll stay down here and preach as long as God leads me down here. And that's good. But to be in heaven in his presence is even better than being down here preaching. Yes, it is. And so God says this through Paul. He says, for we believe that Jesus dies and rose again. Even so, them which are asleep in Jesus, will he bring with him. In other words, one of the people I'm going to look up is this dude right here. Because 
and when if we get raptured up tonight or soon, God's gonna bring all those all those loved ones back with him. Okay. Right. Man, it'll probably take me a million years to talk to Peter. Right. <laughs> Paul. Yes. And find out what they went through. Right? I don't want to talk to Jesus. First question I want to talk to is Jesus. Second is King David. Mm -hmm. That line is gonna be long. So now yeah. you got to start to get a number. Oh, wow. talk about. All right. <laughs> so you that one. <laughs> for preaching the truth and trying to save people. They killed them. They uh, rejected him. They closed their ears. And the same spirit as was back then is the same spirit that we have on earth right now. People don't want to hear. They closed their ears. And they will reject. Which we know is the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why would you not want what we have? I'll give this to everybody. And, I, and we can because it's free, right? And they don't know what they're missing, do they? And they're on their way where? Yeah. And don't even have a clue. So we just want to. They went to a cookout. See, what they don't understand is hell is hot. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I'm going to You know what they did say? I did yeah. hear uh, they was talking about this one guy. He said he went to prison. He said they was playing. They fantasized about going to prison. They was they playing a song while torturing. Like the, they was playing. I forget who saw it. They was playing a do, song. You, do you know why people aren't afraid of hell anymore? Because preachers ain't preaching it no more. Right. So their opinion of what hell is is what the world tells them. Yeah. Yeah. So I've heard no preachers anywhere, just a few, are telling people about hell. They just tell them about heaven. Yeah. So if all you hear is heaven, 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 right? And you never hear hear hell. And, and, and the crazy part is Jesus talked more about hell yeah. than heaven. What does that mean? Preachers should be preaching more about hell right. than heaven. They have to. Look, you got you got two choices. Heaven or hell. There ain't three. There's only two. Now, if I tell you how horrible hell is and tell you how good heaven is and you still choose hell, you're a fool. You're crazy. Because what do I got to do to get to heaven? Accept it. Right. Yeah. One of the things that they do in churches is uh, they rate your sermons. And, you know, so if I preach on hell, I might get a 50. If I preach on money and heaven, I'll get a 96. That means how many people will come back and, and, and agree. Right. And if you preach hell enough, people will be like, man, he's going to church today. He's going to preach on hell. Right. Well, I'd say the reason why this church is growing because we preach on hell. Absolutely. And when God tells me to preach on hell, guess what I'm going to do? Preach on hell. I ain't going to ask y'all's opinion. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I don't even care. Don't shoot me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Pitching his word on Facebook. Yeah. Right. Right. Shoot me if you want. I ain't even running no more. I, th I thought about running. I'm like, nope. Mm -mm. Thank you. Brother West, you want to pray for us? Thank you for allowing us to just hear your word in the comfort of our bedroom and not having to run and hide. Mm. Lord, we, 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 I pray that we open our ears and, and our eyes to see the, the truth, even the 
the lawyer that we're able to just take the information and spread it to those who need it the most in the world. Out in the world, it's, it's perilous. Like Pastor Sanders, we, we're, we're making it seem like there is a hell or hell is fun, but we know that it's not a place that it's even pleasant to be a Christian. Mm. I would be Christian from my wife's time to Christian. So no one got pregnant on that list and not be ashamed of your word or take what you know. And spread it out there to those who, who are unsure, who are looking for a life. Let us take this information and be that light. Glorify you and all of the process. Let it, us realize that it's not us, but it's you, Lord, yes. that dwells in us. And everything that's yes. good in us comes from you. Lord, continue to watch over the pastor and give him the strength and energy and the energy to go through each and every day. And to not only do that, but have the wisdom and the fortitude to tell us the truth, no matter yes. how it seems, no matter, yes. no matter how our hearts yes. take it, we, we need to hear the truth. Lord, as the school season has started, Lord, we pray for the children yes. Yes. that are awake and are at these bus stops and going into school and to protect them. And yes. Not only their, their bodies, but their, their spiritual bodies, Lord, that yes. they understand what it what comes from the word and, and not what the, the school tries to teach them. Lord, continue to, to just watch over us as we go out. Keep us safe. Yes. Increase our faith with each situation, whether it's good or bad. Watch over your saints, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come back Sunday. I might preach on hell. Probably. <laughs> 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 it's not, 